Welcome to lesson 3.3. .3. Today we're going to talk about logs, natural logs, and exponential functions, and all the properties that go along with them. Let's get started. To begin with, the first property helps us expand logs. So if we had an expression log base b of u times v, we can make that up as log base b of u plus log base b of v. So the thing to kind of note here is within our expression, we are multiplying two separate terms together. And when you're multiplying, we're going to expand that as adding the terms. And it works the same way for our natural log. If we had the natural log of u times v, we could spread that up as a natural log of u plus a natural log of v. So just to recap here, we were multiplying our expression u times v, and we split it up as u plus v. So any log or natural log can be split into the sum of two logs or natural logs. Let's go ahead and look at some examples to explore this property further. All right, for our first example here, we have log base 3 of 4 times 2. I was very explicit to show that we were multiplying two expressions within our log. So when I go to expand this, I'm going to be uh, separating them using the sum formula. So we have log base 3 of 4 plus log base 3 of 2. And again, just note, we were multiplying inside our parentheses here for our expression. So when I split that up, I was now adding my two logs. For our second example, we have the natural log of 15. We have to come up with two different terms that we can multiply together to equal 15. There's not a whole lot of examples here, so we're going to go ahead and go with 3 times 5. Again, I'm multiplying those two things together, so when I go to expand this out, I get the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 5. Something very important to remind you of here is I didn't use negative values because, again, negative values are not part of the normal domain for logs and natural logs, so I went directly with a positive 3 and a positive 5. All right, for our second property here, we have the log base b of u divided by v. I'm going to go to split that up. I have log base b of u minus log base b of v. So to kind of highlight things here, we were dividing inside our parentheses. And when I went to expand it, I am now subtracting my expressions. And it works the exact same way for natural logs. Again, we see that we have the natural log of u divided by v. When I go to expand that, I have the natural log of u minus the natural log of v. So we see that same pattern here. We were dividing two terms inside of our parentheses. And when I expand that, I was again subtracting. So any log or natural log can be rewritten as the difference of two logs or natural logs, given that we had an expression that was being divided. All right, here are our two examples here. For the first one, I have log base 4 of 8 over 5. And then I also have the natural log of 8 over 3. We can see for our first example here that we are dividing two terms, the 8 and the 5. So when I go to expand this, I'm going to be subtracting those. So we have log base 4 of 8 minus log base 4 of 5. I can do the same thing for my natural log. Again, I have the natural log of 8 and then subtract the natural log of 3. All right, for our example here, we're going to rewrite the natural log of 30 as either the sum or the difference, and we're going to do that three different ways. So I could go with something like 6 times 5 which would then become the natural log of 6 plus the natural log of 5. I could do 60 over 2, which would be the natural log of 60 minus the natural log of 2. And then for the last one, I could do something like 3 times 10, which would give me the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 10. And each one of these, when I plug it into my calculator, would simplify to be the same value. So it doesn't matter how we choose it. We just know that we have several different options to go ahead and evaluate something like this. Moving on to property number three. This one is used a lot. So what we see here is we have log base b of u to the nth power. And when we rewrite this or simplify this, we see the n has been moved to the front of your log. So what we are allowed to do with this property is if we have an expression, and that expression has an exponent, we can take that exponent and move it to the front of our log to simplify it. And then notice in our simplified expression, the, again, exponents into the front, and we have just the u. And it works, again, the same way with our natural logs. We had an exponent for our expression. We can move that to the front, and again, we see it there. So any exponent for a log or natural log can be rewritten in the front of the log or the natural log, and it's then multiplied by the remaining expression. Let's go ahead and see this as an example. All right, for our first example, we see we have log base 4 of 3 to the 4th. And this 4 here is our exponent. So I can go ahead and rewrite my expression by taking that 4 and moving it to the front. And I then have 4 times 
log base 4 of 3. For my second expression, I have 81, and I want to try and rewrite that as some number to a power. Again, there are a lot of ways to do this. We could just say it's 9 squared. And if I do that, then my 2 would be moving to the front, so I would have 2 times log base 2 of 9. There definitely are other ways that we could have simplified that, and when we get into a later example, so there might be some better ways, but for right now, that works for the example. All right, we're going to apply this property one more time, so you can see that we have natural log of 5 to the 7th. Again, we want to identify our exponent, which in this case is the 7. That can get moved to the front, so when I go ahead to simplify this, I would have 7 times the natural log of 5. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and see if you can correctly identify the simplified form of the natural log of 125. So go ahead and see if you can select it from the possible options. All right, so the first thing we need to try and do here is rewrite 125. And 125 is the same as 5 to the third power. So if I want to rewrite this, then I would get 3 times the natural log of 5. Property number 4, log base b of b is equal to 1. So what we're trying to show here is if we have the same base as our expression, they're going to completely cancel out and we end up getting 1. And let's talk about why this happens. If I wanted to rewrite this going back to our first section using uh, that circle of life expression, I would swap my b and my 1, and the 1 would become an exponent. So b to the first equals b. So we kind of just supported the fact that log base b of b is going to equal 1 because b to the first has to equal b. The nice part here is anytime you see this part of the expression, you automatically know it can simplify to be 1. So once again, if the base of the log and the number of the log are the same, then it's always going to simplify to be 1. Let's go ahead and look at this in an example. All right, we're just verifying here the property holds. So I have log base 4 of 4. Again, those are the exact same values, so I can say it must simplify to be 1. And then again, for my second example, we have log base 3 of 3. Since they are both the same value, it will also simplify to be 1. Okay, let's see if we can combine some of our properties here to fully simplify an expression. To begin with, we have log base 4 of 64. First thing we want to always do is look at our expression and see what can we do with that. We want to see if we can rewrite it as a power, as a product, or as a quotient. And I noticed that 64 has an interaction with the base of 4, which is very important. Anytime we can rewrite the expression involving the base, it's going to be very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite 64 as 4 to the third power. Now at this point, I notice that there's another interaction here. These are, again, the same. And I have an exponent. So whenever I have an exponent, I can move that directly to the front of my log. And I can simplify this a little further. And then going back to the fact that we noticed that these were the same, property number 4 states that the log base 4 of 4 has to be 1. So this portion of our expression is going to be 1, which leads me to just have 3 times 1, giving me a final answer of 3. All right, looking at our second example, it's very similar. We have log base 8 of 64. Again, I'm going to rewrite the 64 either as a product, a sum, or a power. If, whenever possible, I can, when we write using this 8 somehow, and I do notice that 64 is the same as 8 squared, so that's going to be my first step. I'll rewrite it as log base 8 of 8 squared. Again, notice that we have an exponent, so I'm going to take my exponent, I'm going to move that to the front of my log, simplifying this a little further. And then, just like with the previous example, I notice that I have the same value and the same base, so this portion of my expression is going to simplify to be 1 which means I have 2 times 1 for a final answer of 2. All right, here's another example. Uh, we have a value with a number and a variable, so we might not get a simple number for our answer. We might get an expression, but we're going to do the best that we can. To begin with, we want to expand this, and I notice that my expression is 3 times x. Going back to our first property, if I'm multiplying two values within my expression, I'm going to go ahead and expand that by adding them together. So for my first step, we're going to see log base 3 of 3 plus log base 3 of x. Now I'm going to evaluate each one of these expressions individually. So to begin with, I have log base 3 of 3. Going back to property 4, I notice that those are the exact same values. So this whole thing is going to turn out to be just 1. And if I get that second expression, we have log base 3 of x. These don't really have any kind of interaction. I don't have any exponents. I can't rewrite x anymore. So that is actually already fully simplified which means my final answer is 1 plus log base 3 of x. 
Now, one more time, we're going to try and combine all of our properties here to expand this and simplify when possible. To begin with, looking at our initial expression, I have 5 divided by x squared. Because I'm dividing, going back to property 2, I know I can expand this by subtracting the expressions. So for my first step, I'm going to have log base 3 of 5 minus log base 3 of x squared. Okay, now we can simplify each expression individually. If I look at log base 3 of 5, there's no relationship between the 3 and the 5. I don't have any exponents. There's no multiplying or dividing of expressions, so that portion is already fully simplified. When I look at my second expression, I have log base 3 of x squared. The 3 and the x, again, don't have an interaction, but I do have an exponent here, and to fully expand and simplify something, I need to make sure that I take that exponent and I deal with it by moving it to the front of my log. So then for my final expanded, I have log base 3 of 5 minus 2 log base 3 of x. Okay, one more example we're going to try and expand here. Again, what we want to notice is we have uh, an expression. It's got a couple things going on here. So we have 5x squared over z cubed. I have two terms in my numerator. I have something in my denominator. So the first step I want to do here is I want to split up my numerator and my denominator. And I'm going to get natural log of 5x squared minus the natural log of z cubed. Now that I've separated those, I have two separate expressions I can deal with individually. So I have natural log of 5x squared. That has two, two values within the expression. It's got the 5 and the x squared. So I can split that up, again, by adding them together, which will get me the natural log of 5 plus the natural log of x squared. And then I still have that natural log of z cubed. At this point, I can deal with each expression. The natural log of 5 is done. There's nothing else to deal with there. For the natural log of x squared, notice that I do have an exponent, so I can move the exponent to the front. And for the natural log of z cubed, again, I have another exponent, so I can move that to the front. And for my final answer, I get the natural log of 5 plus 2 times the natural log of x minus 3 times the natural log of z. Okay, one more example here. We're going to go ahead and expand this log. To begin with, we're going to split up the numerator and the denominator. And when we do that, we'll be subtracting the 2. So we'd have log base 3 of... 27x cubed minus log base 3 of z to the fifth. Our next step is to go ahead and deal with our first term here because we have two terms. we got the 27 and the x. They're being multiplied together. So we're going to go ahead and split that up, giving me the log base 3 of 27 plus log base 3 of x cubed and then minus log base 3 of z to the fifth. And then for our last step, we're going to go ahead and deal with our exponents. I've got a 3 here and a 5 there. So I'm going to go ahead and put those to the front, giving me log base 3 of 27 plus 3 log base 3 of x minus 5 log base 3 of z. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do is look at our number here, the 27. We always have to consider, could I rewrite this number, this value, as a power of our base, as this 3 here. And it turns out that 27 is the same as 3 cubed. So I can rewrite that as 3 cubed, which would allow me to move that 3 to the very front. So I would have log base, sorry, 3, log base 3 of 3, plus 3 log base 3 of x, minus 5 log base 3 of z. And then using my properties here, I know that log base 3 of 3 will simplify. So my final answer after doing all of this is 3 plus 3 log base 3 of x minus 5 log base 3 of z. Final answer. All right, time to go backwards. We have an expanded expression here. We are going to simplify this by combining everything as a single log. First thing we want to deal with is we want to look at our numbers in the very front. So I have a 2 here and I have nothing there. Those numbers are always going to be moved in to become an exponent. So I see that I now have log base 3 of z squared plus log base 3 of x minus 2. Okay, very important to note here that we have a plus sign in between. So the plus sign is going to signify that when I combine them one more time, I'm going to multiply my expressions, which would be my z squared and my x minus 2. So again, to further write this as a single log, we have log base 3 of z squared times x minus 2. Now we could multiply those together. We don't necessarily have to because we're just trying to write this as a single log. But if we went one step further, we would have log base 3 of z squared times x 
minus 2z squared. All right, for our next example here, we're going to again try and rewrite this expression as a single log. Our first step when doing this is always going to be dealing with the numbers in the front that will be rewritten as exponents. So that 3 is going to come in, the 2 is going to come in, and this 4 will come in. Again, they will come in as exponents, which means that I have the natural log of x to the third plus the natural log of y minus 1 squared, and then minus the natural log of z to the fourth. OK, we're going to do this one step at a time now. I have a couple positive logs. So these two are going to get grouped together because I'm adding them. I can group them together by multiplying. So I'm going to rewrite that part as the natural log of x cubed times y minus 1 squared. And then I still have minus the natural log of z to the fourth. OK, so one more step here. I see that I am subtracting that last expression. So when I'm subtracting, that means I'm going to simplify or combine, actually. And I'm going to combine these expressions by writing them as a fraction. So I now am going to have the natural log of x cubed times y minus 1 squared all over z to the fourth. And that is my final answer. All right, the change of base formula is something we use to evaluate logs when our calculator can't. And that's because your calculator can only evaluate log base 10. So what happens when you have a log that is not base 10? Well, we have a formula for it. So your formula, log base b of x, is going to be rewritten as log base 10 of x and then log base 10 of b. So to kind of just shortcut this, x is going to go to your numerator. Your base, it's on the bottom, it's going to be your denominator. And this can be rewritten as a log as well. So again, the x would go up, we'd have natural log of x. Your base would go down, we'd have the natural log of b as your denominator. And by doing this, we can very quickly evaluate any log that is not base 10 using your calculator. OK, so we have one expression here. We're going to evaluate it using both the log and the natural log just to show that both processes work. So to begin with, let's make sure we can rewrite this correctly. Your initial expression is log base 3 of 5. The 5 is the value we're trying to evaluate. And so that's going to be going up into your numerator to become log base 10 of 5. Since 3 is your base, it's going to go down to the bottom in your denominator to be log base 10 of 3. And we can rewrite this as a natural log as well. Again, 5 is the value we're trying to evaluate. So that's going to go up to your numerator, natural log of 5. 3 is your base, so it goes down into your denominator to become natural log of 3. I'd like you guys to go ahead and plug this into your calculator for both of them just to verify that we do, in fact, get the same answer each time. All right, so each expression is going to give you the same answer. We should get approximately 1.46, regardless of if you use log or natural log. All right, so again, we have another expression here. We have log base 4 of 15. We're going to evaluate it using logs and natural logs. Just to reiterate, the value we're evaluating is 15. So that value is going to go into your numerator. Our base is 4. That goes down to your denominator. So we see for your first expression, we have log base 10 of 15 divided by log base 10 of 4. If we instead use natural logs, again, the value we are evaluating is 15. So that's going to go to your numerator, whereas our base will go down to our denominator. And again, we're going to get the same answer. So I want you guys to go ahead and verify you can do this correctly and then select the correct answer from the options. OK, so regardless of which process you use, you should get the same answer. And you get exact, sorry, approximately 1.95. All right, so this time I haven't set up the expression for you. I want you to go ahead and evaluate log base 7 of 32 using your calculator. And then just collect the correct answer from the options. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this using natural log. So we have the natural log of 32 divided by the natural log of 7. And if you plug that in correctly, then you get approximately 1.78. All right, guys, that guy go ahead and does it for notes. Uh, go ahead and get started on the homework, and good luck.